Portal and Team Fortress 2 are closely entwined. They both originally released together as part of Valve's legendary orange box, and of course they are both developed in-house by Valve. But Portal-inspired hats, badges and weapons aren't just thrown into Team Fortress because Valve happens to own that intellectual property. Every Portal item in Team Fortress 2 has a reason to exist, a reward for doing this or a bonus item for buying that. Let's take a look at the stories behind all of TF2's Portal-inspired items. I want to quickly mention the Friends Forever Companion Square badge, which, whilst clearly is Portal inspired, it's actually a promotional item related to a physical toy that was available at one convention in 2012, and it's a crossover with an entirely different franchise. I've covered this promotional item and other promos unlocked by purchasing real life physical products, including a $250 sous vide cooker, in a previous video. I'll link that video at the end of this one and in the description, so if you do want to know more, you can check that one out. The Aperture Labs Hard Hat Visually, it's a classic worker's hard hat with two optional in-game styles, one with the Aperture Science logo visible, and one with that logo taped over. And also it's got a potato strap to it. Those familiar with Portal 2 will of course recognise this potato as inspired by the sequence of Portal 2 where the antagonist slash temporary supporting protagonist GLaDOS has her personality embedded into a potato and the player carries that potato around with them as GLaDOS provides her classic wry commentary. And the origins of this hat in Team Fortress 2 are equally potato themed, because it was rewarded to players who achieved a certain number of goals in what was known as the Potato Sack. The Potato Sack was a collection of 13 independently developed games. In other words, they weren't Valve games. In the weeks leading up to the scheduled release of Portal 2, these games received several updates with new in-game achievements and other clues that eventually led to an ARG, an alternate reality game. This ARG involved players doing a number of tasks in those 13 Potato Sack games, solving clues, and then even visiting real-world locations to ultimately get to a point where Portal 2 would be released early as a result of their efforts. Now that is an extremely short version of the event, and it's easily a story that could fill a decently length video on its own. So if that is something that you do want to know more about, by all means let me know. But where does the Aperture Labs hard hat fit into all of this? Well that hat was awarded to those who purchased the potato sack of 13 games and who took part in a certain amount of the accompanying ARG. Along with the Aperture Labs hard hat, ARG participants were also able to claim the Resurrection Associate Pin, a badge featuring Portal's best character, the Weighted Companion Cube, as he emerges from a portal with team colours that closely resemble the orange and blue of the portals in... in Portal. Interestingly, there is another promotional Portal badge with exactly the same in-game model as the Resurrection Associate badge, simply called the Companion Cube Pin. That pin was awarded to those who pre-ordered Portal 2 or bought it within a few days of release. The first and only weapon in this list is the App Sap. If you've ever been playing TF2 and heard what you thought sounded like Stephen Merchant's dry, sarcastic English voice whizzing by, you probably weren't imagining it. And that's because the App Sap is a spy sapper resembling the Wheatley Core from Portal 2. And it's actually got over 200 voice lines by Merchant himself, many of which were recorded specifically for this TF2 item. The description of the item also explains that Manco, the Team Fortress Universe company responsible for supplying weapons to the players, amongst other things, acquired the app sap directly from GLaDOS herself, implying that TF2 and Portal, and therefore Half-Life, all exist in the same universe. I'm sure the Valve gatekeepers of Half-Life lore probably would never say that Team Fortress weapon descriptions are considered canon, but hey, it's something amusing to think about. The app sap is obtainable by purchasing the CD version of the official Portal 2 soundtrack, Songs to Test By. As with pretty much every single physical product that Valve release, it's no longer available brand new, so you probably struggle to find a copy where the promo code has not already been used. But if it's just the sapper you're after, it can be bought directly from the Steam community market for around $10. Those familiar with the Portal series will probably quickly recognise the Long Fall Loafer's cosmetic item for the Scout, which resembles the boots worn by Shell, the player character in both Portal games called the Long Fall Boots. Specifically, the loafers represent the contraption on the back of the boots that allows Shell to fall from any height without taking fall damage. Unfortunately for TF2 players, the Long Fall Loafers are purely cosmetic, and they feature no such advantage in-game. To unlock them, an achievement must first be unlocked in an entirely different game. Not Team Fortress, not Portal, but Poker Knight 2. 
Just like in the original Pokenite at the Inventory game, when playing the game, which involves sitting around a poker table with a bunch of familiar characters, said characters will occasionally offer up an item relating to the game that they're from. Should you go on to win that match of poker, you will then unlock that item in Team Fortress 2. Pokenite 2 features GLaDOS as the dealer, and the item that she offers up is the Longfall Loafers. Win a match where she does this, and then you unlock the Longfall Loafers in TF2. Unfortunately, the studio behind the Pokenite games no longer exists as it once did, so with the licenses all mixed up, unfortunately the Pokenite games are no longer purchasable on Steam. Whilst not strictly portal related, I want to mention the Memes vs Machines Potato OS Server 2019 medal. Memes vs Machines was a community run project organised and hosted by a community called Potatoes Custom MVM Servers, whose logo is inspired by the earlier mentioned potato powered GLaDOS from Portal 2. A very tasteful game series to have your logo inspired by, might I add. The Memes vs Machines medal features a potato, much like the community's own logo, with computer parts attached to it, implying that they are powered by the potato itself. The medal's name is even stylized as Potato OS, a reference to Gladys's name as a potato, and it's a word that's even used in one of the track names on the official soundtrack. To earn the medal, you would have had to participate in the community-created Memes vs Machines mission-making contest. Even though it wasn't an officially created contest, nor was it related to Portal in any official capacity, Valve not only were happy to reward players with an in-game badge, but they were also happy for that badge to be inspired by one of their own IPs, and despite Valve's apparent neglect of Team Fortress 2 in terms of actively developing updates for it, I think we can still be super grateful for their constant positive approach towards, and constant support of, community-generated content. So if nothing else, at least we can say thank you to Valve for that. We've talked about portal items in TF2, but did you know that there are also a bunch of TF2 hats that you can wear in Portal 2's co-op mode? By simply having any of these hats in your TF2 backpack, then you can unlock those hats in Portal 2 as a cool little crossover in the other direction. Did you also know that there are TF2 promo items which can be unlocked by spending hundreds of dollars on rare physical products? Or that YouTubers can make videos about more than one game? Click the links on screen right now to find out more, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.